Hey guys, it's Jesus here, and today I'm making a video that's mainly aimed towards those of you who are quite new to PC gaming. It's for those of you who want to get the most amount of frames per second out of their hardware, whilst not making the game look like crap. So we're going to go through each individual graphics setting, and I'm going to tell you how badly they affect your frames per second, and we're also going to go through the amount of impacts that they have on the quality of the game. And then after doing this, I'll hopefully be able to tell you which ones to turn up, which ones to turn down, or which ones don't really matter because they don't affect your frame rate very much at all. So the first thing that we're going to go through is anti-aliasing deferred. Anti-aliasing smooths out vertices on all objects within the game and gives the effect that you're playing on a higher resolution than you actually are. As you can see on the screen now, with anti-aliasing off, there are jaggies across all of the screen and the game literally does look like crap. You have three options available to you under anti-aliasing deferred and these are 2 times MSAA, 4 times MSAA and off. MSAA stands for multi-sampling anti-aliasing. Multi-sampling anti-aliasing is basically a much better optimised version of super sampling anti-aliasing. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail on how they work because they're very complicated, but simply put, super sampling takes an average of pixel locations in several different angles and averages them out and that then causes it to look a lot straighter. That's very dulled down but that's essentially what it does. Anti-aliasing is very useful and should be high up on your list of things to turn up. It is however very hardware expensive. The difference between 2 times and 4 times anti-aliasing is very small, however the difference between 2 times and none is extremely large. If you are stuck for frames per second, you should turn down every other graphic setting, but leave this one on 2 times MSAA. As there are less jaggies, it means that your enemies are much more defined and easier to see, and so you should keep it up accordingly. The next graphic setting that we're going to go over is textures. Textures do have a very, very low impact on your frames per second and also have a very high impact on what the game looks like. The only thing it does have a huge impact on is your video memory. If your graphics card doesn't have enough video memory, you'll find that when you look down a sight line where there are lots of textures being displayed on screen at once, you will see huge frame rate stutters while, while your computer tries to load the textures from either the hard drive or your normal RAM. But as a general rule, you should definitely turn this value up as it only has a minute impact on frames per second, whilst it does have a huge visual quality to the game. The issue is that you won't really be able to see the difference that it makes from watching it on YouTube, as YouTube does have a tendency to make everything look like rubbish, no matter how good the quality is when you're actually playing it. Now the next graphic setting to go on to is texture filtering. What this does is basically just adds definition to all of the textures within the game, making them look less blurry and easier to see. Whilst this does have a very low impact on your frames per second, it also doesn't really add anything to the quality of the game as far as I'm concerned. So if you really, really are stuck for frames per second and want to scrounge around for every single little piece you can get, turning this down won't really affect the quality of the game all too much. The next graphic setting to go over is terrain quality. Turning this up will increase the amount of geometry on terrain, turn them into higher poly objects, making them look a lot more realistic. Although I do think that this does add quite a big impact onto the game, I don't really think it's a necessity to have up. I mean, yes, I do notice when it is turned up, but when it's turned down, I don't really sit there and think, oh my god, that looks disgusting, I hope that I've got to go and turn that up again. And it does have a fairly high cost to your FPS. So if you are in need of a few extra frames per second, then go ahead and turn this down. And this should be one of the last things that you try to turn up, so go ahead and turn all the other settings up before you turn this one up. Now the next graphic setting to go on to is terrain decoration. This graphic setting does have a varying FPS impact depending on how high you have your anti-aliasing up. Turning this up increases the amount of flora in the world and also improves the way that they react to physics. On top of this it also increases the amount of debris drawn on the screen as well as improving the distance in which flora and debris are drawn. As more flora and debris are drawn this increases the number of vertices in the world meaning that your computer has to anti-aliase more vertices than it usually would. Although it does make the game look a lot more beautiful and a lot more realistic it will decrease your performance in game. Often, having it turned up will mean that you can't see enemies as easily, as there is more flora blocking their way. Despite this, it is one of the graphic settings that I do like to turn up, as mainly because I can, as my computer is pretty good and I can handle it, and so I can still get 60 frames per second quite easily. But, if you are stuck for frames per second, you should make sure that you keep anti-aliasing turned up, and turn this one down as low as possible. Because you do have to bear in mind that a higher frames per second is always going to be more important than keeping the quality looking good. As I said earlier, one of the things that I do love about this is just the way that all the floor is really interactive and you can just, just walking over it will make it move and everything like that. I just do love that, that's why I keep it turned up. But if you can't do it, you should definitely turn it down. So next up on our list is mesh quality. Unfortunately, mesh quality is one of the ones that you really can't see the difference in a YouTube video, but in-game it does actually make quite a big difference. Turning this up will increase the level of detail on all of the objects within the world. Turning the setting up will also increase the amount of memory that the game uses, meaning that if you do have a low amount of RAM then you should probably turn this down. 
Turning this up, however, does make your enemies a lot easier to spot at longer distances. And it's for that reason that I do recommend you turn it off if you can. Even if you're not RAM limited, this setting will still have a medium FPS cost. And so if you're still struggling for frames per second, I would recommend that you turn this setting down. But I would recommend that you turn down some of the other settings first, considering the fact it does make your enemies easier to see. The next graphic setting to cover is lighting quality. In my opinion, lighting quality should be the second to last thing on your list that you want to turn down. And it's only losing out to AA Deferred. But there is a huge issue with this though. It does really kill your CPU. This is because shadows are rendered in real time, which means that when objects move, they have to have their shadows calculated by the CPU. So if you are CPU bound, you should probably consider turning this one down as this will kill your frames per second. Although honestly, I would say this should be a complete last resort, as I do find that everything seems a lot more realistic when this is turned up. As you can see from the video, when lighting quality was on low, there were very, very low resolution shadows. And to me, it does really make the game look very weird. And so unless your CPU really is holding you back, you should definitely try and keep this up as high as possible. The next graphic setting to cover is effects quality. Effects quality controls the number of particles in the game, as well as other things like the realism of explosions. Again, particle physics are generally something that's controlled by your CPU, so if you're CPU bound, you should generally try and turn this down. Personally, I don't really see a huge need for this. I don't really think it's particularly necessary to have this turned on. It just makes everything look a bit more pretty. Like, if you look here and you look at how the explosions work on Ultra, you'll see that everything kind of seems to shatter away from the ground and it seems to just blow up a lot better. But, at the end of the day, even with effects on low, you can still see explosions happen. They still look just as cool, but they just don't quite have that same oomph to them. I don't really think it's necessary because you can still see the explosions. It does still have a medium FPS cost. So, as far as I'm concerned, effects quality should be one of the things that you turn down first. The next thing to cover is anti-aliasing post. Anti-aliasing post is another type of anti-aliasing that relies entirely on your GPU. And on top of that, it's extremely quick. This is because it uses the relatively new method of anti-aliasing called FXAA. FXAA stands for Fast Approximate Anti-Aliasing. Yes, it should probably have been FAAA, but I think that'd been a bit of a tongue twister to say. So I think that's probably why they went with the FX option. What this does is rather than smoothing out vertices, it smooths out pixels as a whole. Now because your GPU doesn't have to go through each individual vertice and smooth them out individually, it means it's a lot quicker than anti-aliasing deferred, and has practically no hit to frame rate whatsoever. There is an issue with FXAA however, and a lot of people don't like to use it because of it. This issue is that it does actually tend to blur out textures quite a lot as well. As I said earlier, FXAA doesn't just smooth out vertices, it also smooths out everything else, which means that it does tend to smooth out all of the textures, which means that they can appear to be blurry because of it. So that's all a matter of personal opinion, but you should probably just turn it up anyway because it has minimal effect on your frame rate. Next up is ambient occlusion. This is pretty cool. It just basically goes on about how light reflects on objects in the world. HBAO is the main and best type of ambient occlusion for you to use. Personally, I think it makes the game look pretty good, but a lot of people say they don't really see much of a difference. Whereas I personally do, and I like to crank it up, but it's entirely up to personal opinion. And if you don't think it makes much of a difference, then that's up to you. Turning up will also increase the quality of the shaders within the game, which obviously makes everything look a bit more 3D and makes everything, you know, seem to be a lot more realistic looking. Unfortunately though, it does add a huge impact on your frame rate, so I'd recommend that you turn it down if you're stuck for FPS. So as a quick recap before we end, basically the ones you want to keep turned up are anti-aliasing deferred, anti-aliasing post, and also lighting quality. Unfortunately, they do all carry big frame rate hits with them, but they are all well worth it and all add something to the gameplay. So I hope you've all learned something from this video. I know that I certainly didn't enjoy making it. Bearing in mind I spent at least two hours walking around the training ground map trying to get footage of each individual thing. But it was meant to be an educational video, not an enjoyable video anyway. So I've been TSS and goodbye.